due process, recipient of five Mid-Atlantic Emmy Awards since 1997. He's learning to shoot from his father, who learned from his father. This is not what the million moms had in mind when they marched on Washington. Gun rights, gun control, gun locks, gun laws, all on the docket for this edition of Due Process. Major funding for Due Process is made possible by the New Jersey State Bar Foundation, committed to educating the public about the law. Additional funding is provided by Lawyer's Diary and Manual. Their numbers never did reach one million, but they did turn out in the hundreds of thousands, mothers and others who say it's time to get a tighter grip on guns. I'm Raymond Brown, and on this edition of Due Process, the fight for and against greater gun control, it's an issue that inspires strong passion on both sides, as we'll see when the current Senate president, a former Senate president, and a gun rights advocate square off. But first, here's Sandy King with a look at what's new and what's not in the gun control shootout. Sandy? Raymond, there is nothing new about the call for gun control, though it's rarely been voiced with such volume in such numbers as when the not-quite-million-mom march came to Washington. It was a new approach to an old debate, fueled this time by case after case, headline after headline, of lethal gun violence, especially the kind involving kids. You are the future now. You are the ones who are going to make our lawmakers listen. There is also nothing new about the claim from opponents that the Second Amendment gives us all an absolute right to guns, free of government interference. Of course, that's just one side of the constitutional dispute. The other contends that the Second Amendment speaks only to the rights of states to mount armed militias, an anachronism guaranteeing nothing to individuals, and especially not kids. It's an image that some might find chilling. A child with a gun in his hand. And except for the fact that he's not wearing goggles, it's legal. It feels good. But this is my first night here. I'm Target mm -hmm. seeing from my dad. His father says it's all in the name of safety. After all, he learned the same way. And he's been coming to places like this. Well, off and on since I was a little kid, I come with my dad. He's always taught us, and instead of keeping us away, he teaches us what could happen if you use it in the wrong way. But it's all those examples of the wrongest way. Terrifying images like these last year from Columbine that have increasing numbers of Americans calling for stricter controls on guns, even marching for greater gun safety. This has resonated with mothers so deeply as we have watched report after report after report of children dying by guns and the most appalling aspect and heinous aspect of it is that it's preventable perception it's a problem of perception uh, i believe that within the last year especially and some of the terrible terrible tragedies that occurred uh, that involve firearms uh, has created a public perception that firearms are to blame uh, when really it's it's individuals that are to blame but requiring individuals to use their guns more safely, starting with locking them up, is an increasingly popular plan. I believe, in my own opinion, millions of people who want us to pass legislation like this. Witness new legislation sponsored by the Senate president to get tough on gun-toting felons and to require the sale of only so-called smart guns, ones that would recognize their lawful owners once the smart gun technology is on the market. There's no reason to fear this bill. 
There's absolutely no reason to fear it. It is simply uh, using technology to make guns safe. But a group of doctors here at Passaic General Hospital felt so strongly that gun locks could prevent some of the tragedies they see right now that they decided not to wait for the smart guns. Instead, they're giving out trigger locks for free that they themselves have bought. You put a trigger lock on, the gun cannot shoot. And as a surgeon, it would be nice not to have that kind of business. I believe in the gun locks for kids. They should, if you have a gun at, at your house, you should lock it up in a, in a lock box and make sure it's secure so uh, no children get their hands on the, the weapon and accidentally fire it. Of course, the locks are intended for legal guns, but buyback programs like this one that just wrapped in Montclair have a different kind of target, the unregistered, illegal kind. Something like this go right, you know, right in your pocket uh, and it'd be concealed. You got the tag there, but you can carry it in your pocket and you wouldn't know anything about it. So Montclair's been paying from $50 for a simple handgun to $150 for a semi-automatic in a program triggered by $10,000 in private funds in the wake of an awful crime. Black Talon bullets, the kind known to pierce armor and also explode upon impact, were used in the postal shootings. Law enforcement officials say Green came armed with enough bullets to carry out a massacre. Since then, Montclair has taken nearly 1,000 guns off its streets. But Newark, with a new federal grant of more than $700,000, is looking for a bigger game and a lot more guns. 1,000 guns removed from society, the potential saving of 1,000 lives, 1,000 injuries, 1,000 incidents. And But the polls show that most Americans want more than buybacks of illegal guns. They want tighter controls on all arms. A Star Ledger Eagleton poll last year showed that 60% of New Jerseyans worry a lot about gun violence. And nearly one half want a ban on all handguns. It's a stand that draws plenty of fire at this shooting range in Hudson County, both from first-timers. Just the curiosity of shooting the gun. Just um, to see how it feels. And Radiation old hands. Also, it's, it's a fun sport. Once you get into it and you start shooting and you, uh, you come down to the range here and you, it, it gets addicting. It's fun. Kills a little energy and you get to shoot something. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I would carry a gun around. If anything happens in the house. I would protect my family and all that stuff protect me. So what does the Second Amendment say? A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And what exactly does that mean? Well, that depends on whom you ask. There are constitutional scholars and court decisions on both sides, but the fight these days is less about the constitutional debate and more about the moral debate, the pragmatic debate, and of course, Raymond, the political debate. And we'll be looking at all three of those fronts when we come back, so you stay with us. Uh, yes, the Constitution does give us all the right to bear arms, yes. Only if they use them the right way and don't break any laws. For the defense of the country, I would say so. Uh, otherwise, I'm probably very much opposed to all guns. Uh, the Constitution allows us to bear arms because uh, the police can't be everywhere. It's not a police state. It gives them the right, but I mean, I don't think it is right. I think they just shouldn't give, give people rights to bear arms because guns kill people, and I wish they would destroy guns. You know, I believe it's okay to protect yourself, but uh, to, have a, to have guns just to be having them or to have them just as a, a hobby, I don't think that's necessary. I think that that language was included initially at a different time in our history when it was necessary to be able to reserve that right, but I no longer feel that it's appropriate. I have no problem with uh, passing laws to control it, but I also think our 
laws should be enforced that we have now. And most New Jerseyans, in fact, most Americans, say they do want tougher gun laws. Laws like the ones proposed by Senate President Don DeFrancesco. Nearly half even favor a ban on all handguns, like the one once proposed by John Russo when he was Senate President. But Ed Zahn, an attorney for gun owners, says they've both got it wrong. Ed Zahn, let me start with you then. Sure. And say, there were sizable numbers of folks at the Mother's Day Million Mom right. March, and almost half of New Jerseyans sound like they would favor a total ban on handguns. Any reason why we can't do that? Sure. The Constitution protects the minority. Majority rule is something we don't have in this country we never had. If we had majority rule, anybody, a uh, simple majority could tell people that they don't like their message and abridge the First Amendment. What does the Constitution say about guns? The, the Constitution says that Guns are an individual right. Every one of the first eight amendments, that is the Bill of Rights, are individual rights. All right, let me turn to Senator, Senator Russo, because a lot of things were said about you were in the Senate, but I don't think people said that you would lightly act in an unconstitutional manner. So I assume you don't agree with Ed Zahn that gun bans would be unconstitutional? Oh, clearly not. Uh, in fact, if we could uh, uh, conclude that it was constitutional to have guns, and, there was, and it was protected by the Constitution, there'd be no debate, certainly not by me. Uh, there's a dispute. I, I know Ed feels that there are some decisions that say uh, that there is a constitutional right. I don't agree with that. Uh, many people don't. So when until did you, you resolve it. When did you propose the ban and why? I think it was about 1985, 86. What led you to do that? Oh, gosh, there were a lot of reasons. I was a prosecutor for 10 years. Uh, I saw a lot of homicides. I saw a lot of accidental deaths caused by handguns. I saw suicides and children killed by, by guns. And it just uh, and I had an incident in my own family. My father was a, a murder victim during a robbery attempt at his home. Uh, I just felt there was no redeeming value for handguns. Now, I never proposed that we uh, ban hunting uh, equipment or target shooting or things of that sort, but there's no redeeming need for a handgun in this country today. Right, let, let me turn to our current Senate president. Senator, I'm assuming that your motivations are similar to the ones Senator Russo had when he proposed a total ban. But your end result, your proposed legislation is a little different. Why have you not endorsed the idea of a total ban since a, a sizable number of New Jerseyans seem to want that? Mm. Well, I, I don't think, I think that's an extreme position. I, I don't think a state, a particular state, can, can move forward on a total ban of handguns. I think it it just wouldn't work. I think there is some question of constitutionality, apparently, and and I, I'm I, you know, and while I don't want to mention the words process because that's really what we're talking about here is I'd like to get something done, and getting something done means uh, talking about safer guns. What what I propose is a when there's a safer gun on the market anywhere in this country, then in New Jersey that's the gun, the handgun that we ought to be we ought to be able to sell, and that's the handgun that only people should be able to buy. And I, I don't see how uh, Ed or anybody else uh, anywhere can be opposed to the idea that if there is a safer handgun, that that's the handgun you must buy. Nobody's saying you can't buy it. Nobody's saying there's a deadline. Nobody's saying there's a ban. How could you possibly be opposed to manufacturing safer handguns and therefore, per, as Senator Russo said, cutting down on the number of suicides, accidents, children playing with guns uh, that uh, are loaded? Uh, look, statistically, we, we know that regardless of what uh, people say about trigger locks, and we do mandate trigger locks in New Jersey, that uh, people leave their guns loaded. A lot, large portion of our people leave their, leave their guns loaded. And, and kids are, have access to these guns, regardless of what people say and will admit to, we know that kids have access to the guns, maybe even unwittingly uh, in terms of uh, in the household. So parents don't know everything their children are doing. I just think that if there's a safer handgun, we in New Jersey ought to lead the way and mandate that that's the handgun you must buy if you want to, if you, if you need to buy a handgun. Ed, the Senate President has sort of thrown down the gauntlet, if you don't mind my mixing sure. metaphors, gauntlets don't go with guns too well, but essentially he said, why not opt for a safer handgun and mandate? Well, I've read Senator DeFrancisco's legislation, and what it says is that once one is deemed available in the marketplace, and incidentally, it, is, it, it will be deemed available by the executive branch, which poses a lot of separation of powers issues because the attorney general and the superintendent of state police will be in the position of telling us what we are allowed to buy. But once one so-called smart gun is available, that will be the only one. That's what triggers the law, to use a phrase. That's what triggers the law. That will be granting a government monopoly on which guns can be sold in the state. That's number one. Number two, it says nothing 
about the used guns out in the marketplace. It only affects licensed dealers, and of course you can sell guns individually in this state and, and most every other in the country. And mostly, the most important reason is that we've never been shown that this is solving any particular problem. We don't have a gun accident problem with children in this country. There are less than well, Ed, 25. There are less than, I have statistics, Senator. I would disagree with that. Well, uh, I have statistics have about plenty that, which of we'll talk about we in a minute. Yeah. But uh, we don't have a gun accident problem. So-called smart guns can never, will never, prevent purposeful criminal acts with guns because that's why they're criminals. The criminals don't follow the laws. And why should we be told how we want to protect our families? Senator Russo, that's right. The only thing that will prevent purposeful criminal acts will be the banning of the guns. Uh, I agree with Ed that smart guns can be used to kill people, too. And that's why I felt then, and I, I commend Senator DeFrancesco. He's proposed something that probably has a reasonable chance of getting done. My proposal Ed's didn't. Ed Zahn suggests, though, that Senator DeFrancesco's proposal is marginal, that, that accidents by children or others are such a small part of the but, problem that the smart gun doesn't solve but, it. But Does that, I'm going to come back to you, Senator. I know. I just wanted to ask Senator Russo where he stands on that. Oh, you know How what? significant is the accidental shooting problem? Oh, it's, in, in my opinion, very significant. Okay. Although you can argue statistics back and forth. Okay. But if we save one child's life, right. we've accomplished well, something. Right. Let, let, me hear, let me hear this from the Senator, and we'll come back to you. Senator, look, look, I right. know you want to respond to Ed Zahn, yeah, and I've course. got a question. Ed, Ed, it's one way of thinking. Government is involved in many aspects of our life. We mandate seat belts. We mandate helmets on bicycles. We mandate lots of consumer protection, child protection, safety programs, and safety uh, gadgets, so to speak. These, and, are guns uh, we're to, these are guns we're talking about. And why, if, if, you're, if your spouse or if your friend if, if you're, uh, wants to buy a handgun, why would they not want to buy the safest possible handgun, like they buy the safest possible car or the safest possible any other thing? That are they you can. suggesting, Senator, that if we had smart guns in the house, that we could leave them loaded around the house if they were so safe? Why do you have to mandate and that's not some... For me to, that's not for me to determine. All well, I'm you're suggesting is that... what kinds of guns we're supposed to have. What I mean, is, well, are you saying wrong with that, that if, if these guns are going to be personalized, are you saying that now I have to have one, my wife has to have one, we all have to have unique, individualized guns? No, you I know, didn't say that. You know, Ray, I have, a, I have one quick statistic for you, which I, I should talk about, what? about accidents. And, you know, in 1997, there were 4,200 people under the age of 19 killed with guns. However, of those 4,200 deaths, 15% of them were for children the age of 0 to 14. Most of those 4,200 deaths were intentional criminal acts. In this country in 1997, 21, 21 children nationally were killed accidentally with a handgun. 21. Right. Senator, let me try to reframe this a little bit so we don't get too drawn into a statistical debate. Uh, there are some people that are arguing that your bill really doesn't go very far. For example, right. we've got a delay until we wait until the safe handgun is available, which might be two to two and a half years, and then a three-year period before there's a ban. So we could be talking as much as five years before your bill takes any guns out of circulation or at least stops the sale of non-safe handguns. Uh, if that's true, doesn't that suggest a lot of patience in connection with a problem that some people feel needs urgent solution? Well, it suggests this, that there, you would have to wait a pro at least three years before the, the bill actually triggered in into effect. And, and look, quite frankly, and of course, as we sit, NJ, NJIT is having a conference dealing with smart gun technology. We've given them a million dollars to deal with this issue. It, it suggests that other manufacturers will follow during that three year period. There will be more than one gun available for retail sale once a smart gun technology is available. And it can be a smart gun technology available in many different ways. Perhaps three or four people will be able to shoot that very same gun if you wish to have a gun in your house. Uh, I, I think that you know, Ed and, and the people uh, that Ed represents just don't, don't want to open their eyes to the fact that people are demanding safer guns. Senator, let me ask you this question because I suspect it's on the minds mm -hmm. of our viewers. It's, it's no accident that you are regarded as one of the people who may be the next governor in this state or certainly a contender. Mm -hmm. uh, the NRA is basically arguing no ban. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people like Senator Russo in the past and maybe half of this state who say we should have an absolute ban. And some have suggested your position is kind of in the middle uh, designed to enhance your political future as a governor. Yeah. I, I think you should respond to that because I think some yeah. people are thinking it. Well, I don't think it does enhance my position. I, I think that there, you know, there are people who 
for and there are people against. I feel very strongly that I'd like New Jersey to have a law in place. I have been in the legislature a long time. Senator Molino suggested that we ban handguns. Senator Russo, as he said, back in 1985 or 86, made the very same suggestion. And here we are today, in 2000, still talking about a gun ban. What I'd like to do is, as New Jersey has always been, be in the forefront of an issue that people around this country are talking about, safer handguns. If you want to own a handgun, then you ought, it ought to be the safest possible gun that you own. Let me ask you all a question about an image we showed at the beginning of this program, and that's the image of a young child being shown how to shoot by his father. I suspect there are some people, maybe a sizable portion of New Jersey residents, who might be disturbed by that. Did any of you have a, a reaction to that? Oh, I did, and especially the ad the NRA has been running where they, I think if I got it right, put up a million dollars to teach people, particularly young people, how to safely use guns. These may be young people that haven't been exposed to guns. That's only going to expose more people to guns. You see, if we've done nothing else today, and I commend what Senator DeFrancesco is doing, but the debate about guns has now gotten to the point where, because of Columbine and other unfortunate uh, incidents, people are now starting to debate, do we really need guns at all? That is handguns. Could your bill, Ed, I'm going to come back to you because I think you want to respond, but could your bill, a total ban, given the poll numbers showing almost 50 percent of people opposed, have a chance now to succeed in the New Jersey legislature? Right today? Uh, I wouldn't think so today. Very close, though. It's getting there because years ago, when I proposed the bill, people weren't focusing on it. They weren't thinking about it. Now they are. God forbid we have some more incidents like Columbine and things like that, and you're going to see a lot so maybe more. Maybe one more unfortunate on incident. Ed Zahn, well, you wanted to respond. To the it. number of school shootings, first of all, has dropped precipitously over the past decade. But that aside, I saw the image of the of the young man and his father, and I thought it was a pretty nice image. Um, uh, I am looking forward to the time when uh, my son, who is uh, yet to be born, uh, will uh, be able to go shooting with me and I can teach him how to handle any firearm safely. Because if I do teach him how to handle a firearm safely, there will never be an accident. Accidents are accidents. The people who teach their children how to handle guns safely have far fewer accidents, almost no accidents in the home from firearms. The ones who have the accidents are the negligent parents who may just leave loaded guns around, which I don't advocate at all. But I think responsible ownership is, is the key. But I don't think the government ought to tell us what kinds of guns to buy, what we ought to buy, how we should protect ourselves, how we should lock up our guns. I don't think that's the government's interest. Senator DeFrancisco, let me come back to you because I sense that there is a tremendous urgency among Americans and New Jerseyans in particular about this issue. And yet your bill, because it's focused on technology, really puts off action for some time in the future. Right. Do you feel a need for something else in order to deal with this strong tide of opposition to handguns? Well, uh, much of what they're talking about nationally already is in place in New Jersey. Let me say that up front. Um, and, and first of all, that we already have very difficult laws in New Jersey. So much of what I see on national TV, we've already addressed, whether it be trigger locks or, or whether it be registration, identification, all of those issues that I, I've heard about over the weekend. We want to be in the forefront of something new and different. We want to be in the forefront of safer guns. We want people to own safer guns. We want to start a trend. We want to be a model for the country. And, and I think that, uh, and I, of course, this isn't me. I'm, I'm the facilitator here. There are over 30 organizations that have urged me to sponsor this bill. There are our mothers, the PTA members, police officers, police chiefs, uh, all the various groups that, as you've read about, want us to pass a bill like this in New Jersey let, so let, let we can cause one, manufacturers to make them. Let me ask you one last question based mm -hmm. on your political acumen. The NRA nationally is a significant force. Is right. it a significant political player in this state on this issue? They are always a significant political player in the state on, on issues dealing with uh, gun uh, laws or even, even on a safety issue like this. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they would oppose such a bill, as Senator Russo probably kind of indicated before. How could they be opposed to this? The NRA, they should be supporting this, as a matter of fact, because then they can buy all the safe handguns they want to buy. This is not a ban. This is not a deadline. Ed Zahn, I honestly don't know where you are on the NRA, but what do you think about their position with respect to this bill and other similar legislation? I think the NRA is correct on this issue. I, as you know, I don't represent the NRA, but I think the NRA's position is, and it certainly is my position, that if somebody wants to go and buy a so-called smart gun, they should have the right, but they shouldn't be told by the government that that's the only way they can be safe. This issue is not over. Thank both state senators and Ed Zahn.
Zahn, that's it for this edition of Due Process, but we'll be back here next week when we'll take on still another tough question of law and social justice. Till then, for Sandy King and all of us here, I'm Raymond Brown. Thanks for watching. right to bear arms because we believe in guns in this country. But it is not a right conferred by the Constitution. It's our opinion that it's an individual right and that uh, it should be regulated but only within reason. We are looking at making guns safer just as every product in the country is regulated for safety. New Jersey has uh, arguably the strictest gun laws in the nation. We have some of the strictest laws in the country but we have a long way to go before our kids and our citizens are truly safe. Members of the coalition are not, uh, you know, gun zealots. Uh, we're law-abiding citizens and we want to be able to uh, exercise our constitutional rights within the law and unfettered. The most appalling aspect and heinous aspect of it is that it's preventable. And I think that's, that's what's really um, moved mothers, that they feel that they can do something and that they must do something. Major funding for due process was made possible by the New Jersey State Bar Foundation, committed to educating the public about the law. Additional funding was provided by Lawyer's Diary and Manual.